So hello everyone and welcome. I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to talk about the Robo Taxi slash Cybercab event that you know Elmo Musk promoted the other day. And uh, it's not because it's going to affect me directly, you know, electric vehicles and autonomous driving. I only drive secondhand cars in Western Europe, so it won't affect me directly. But the future of driving is at stake, and that's something that it's a subject matter that I find very important and very interesting to discuss. And I'm not going to talk about minutiae of the event, you know, the fact that it was so cringeworthy to watch with his mumbled and stuttered delivery. That was terrible. Uh, uh, but, but, not, but not the... Uh... All the whooping and hollering from the crowd, saying, I love you, and all that stuff. <laughs> so... So... I'm sorry, Americans, you are mocked mercilessly all over the world for your, uh, I don't know, your penchant for getting very easily excited over very little. I don't mean to be nasty, but it is true. Nor am I going to go into the robot. That was also a bit weird. But um, there are channels that are much better equipped in terms of knowledge than I am to talk about that. But what I am going to talk about is that robo taxi and ask what problem does it solve? In my opinion, there are five things that make city driving quite an issue and that's pollution congestion parking cost and safety and in my humble opinion the robo taxi does very little if not nothing to address these issues so we'll start off with pollution how does this actually reduce pollution i'm not really sure it's supposed to maybe take cars off the road but if you have zero emissions vehicles on the road already or ultra low emissions cars then that will solve that problem. It doesn't matter if the vehicle is being driven by a human or not, it will emit either very little or nothing at all in the case of electric vehicles. The thing is, it is going to be a car that's going to use a lot more energy than a regular electric vehicle. Because as Elmo Musk himself said during the presentation, it's going to be charged using induction. Something we're also doing is uh, inductive charging. The Robotaxi has no plug. For those who aren't familiar, induction charging is basically wireless charging. If you ever used a phone with wireless charging, there are a couple of things that you probably noticed. It gets very hot and it charges slower. The heat is energy that's dissipated, that's just lost. And I don't know what the percentage of extra energy you need to charge a car is in relation to charging a car using a cable actually plugged in. But for phones, it's 40% more. So that means you're using 40% more energy to do the same task. And if it comes to cars, it's probably going to be more. I don't know. Thinking of the size of the batteries and the heat it's going to generate, it's probably going to lose more energy than a phone will. So, but let's say it's 40% lost. You're going to need 40% more energy to charge this robo taxi thing, and it's going to take longer. So even though you're not emitting at the point of use, you still had to use more energy and perhaps more emissions to generate the uh, electricity that went into the battery. So it's probably not going to reduce emissions that much or pollution I should say it's just going to it's just going to forward the problem to someone else the second thing that it's supposed to solve is congestion again adding more cars to the road doesn't seem like a way of solving congestion because you are going to add more cars to the road at least initially but let's forget about that. The Robo Taxi or Robo Cab or whatever it is, Cyber Cab, I keep forgetting. It only has two seats plus somewhere to put your luggage and cargo or whatever. But it only has two seats. So basically, I would take five people in my car right now, me and four other people. But the same trip in Cyber Taxi Cab Robo things, I'd need three vehicles. Two of them with two people and an extra one, the third one for one person. So I'm not reducing the amount of people that I'm taking downtown, am I? So I'm not really sure about that. I do think, you know, I don't know, this is a crazy thought that just came into my head. If you want to reduce the amount of vehicles going downtown, maybe make them bigger so they take more people like, I don't know, a bus or a train or a tram. I don't know, crazy thought, isn't it? And then there's the matter of parking. And right at the beginning, uh, Elmo showed, you know, a massive parking lot, but completely chock full of vehicles, probably unsold Teslas. And 
He said, you know, parking lots will become a thing of the past. We're going to have green spaces. We're going to take the ing lots out of parking lots. <laughs> You're, we're, taking, we're taking the ing lot out of parking lot. Um. But if you think back to the induction charging thing, because these cars are going to have to charge by themselves. They're going to have to charge during the day. They're going to have to charge at night. They're going to have to find places to charge. So instead of having just simple parking lots for regular cars, you're going to have to build places where these cars can charge. And don't forget, it's going to take a long time because induction charging takes longer than regular charging. So instead of having just simple parking lots, it's just like, you know, asphalt or whatever, you're going to have to have these other parking lots or should I say charging stations, but with very complicated infrastructure all over the place. And it's going to get very hot and when we get there, we're going to have to find ways of solving this, you know, of either reducing the heat. I don't know. There's going to be a whole load of technical issues. I'm pretty sure about that. Even if the amount of parking lots is reduced, don't think that we're going to have suddenly lots of parks. That's not how it works. Ask anyone who lives in a place where you've got empty bits of land, like here in Porto, where I live. If there's an empty bit of land, people do not make parks, unfortunately. Very greedy people come along and build buildings and sell them for lots of money. So that green spaces thing is a whole load of hogwash, to put it nicely. And in all honesty, I don't think that it's going to solve the parking that much. These cars are going to have to park somewhere sometime. If not to, like, for example, to be hoovered and cleaned. I think they show that robot arm cleaning crumbs off the seats. Oh, how very quaint. But that's not going to happen. Why? We're going to get to the cost now. Elmo pulled some numbers out of his bodily orifice saying it was uh, $1 per mile for public transport because it's subsidised. Well, so are cars as well. Our taxes pay for the roads and pay for all the motorways and bridges and all sorts of things. So, again, it's something that's subsidised. as not just fuel duty, by the way. Keep that in mind. We all have to pay for the roads, even if we don't use them. But I don't know where he got that number from. And he also said it's going to be like 25 cents a mile or 30 or 40 cents a mile. He pulled some numbers out of thin air, but he did not back them up. Just like the price of the car. It's going to be like under $30,000. Will it? Can he prove that? I don't know. His predictions for pricing haven't been very good. But in terms of cost, if it's very cheap, you're going to have lots of people wanting to use it for all sorts of things. You know... Um, People with substance problems are going to want to use the privacy of these robocabs to shoot up. I mean, if it's only like 20 cents a mile, if uh, young couples will want to maybe express their love for each other, it's cheaper than a motel. And there'll probably be spillage. And if you're going to use the robocab after, you know, these young couples have used them, I wouldn't want to be in there myself. And it's, it's not going to be that robot Tom that, that sucks up crumbs that's going to clean that, is it? If... On the other hand, this is the cost per mile, the 20 odd cents is the cost per mile. I should have probably said that earlier. It's what whoever bought the robo taxi will pay to run it. But in theory, they can charge whatever they want because it's not going to be te it's not going to be Tesla's. They've sold it. It's like, I don't know, Toyota selling one of their cars for as a taxi. It's the taxi owner who's going to say how much it's going to cost. So even if it costs the owner I don't know, 50 cents a mile, whatever, it doesn't matter. They can charge $5 a mile. So it might not be cheap transport. It might be much more expensive than buses and trains, which honestly, I think it will be. You know, what's the advantage of having this individualized transportation thing and you just bought it as an individual buyer if you're not going to make profit? I don't know. It just doesn't seem to be a very uh, a compelling argument that's going to reduce costs, because I don't think it is. And it'll be at this point you're saying, no, we're removing the Uber driver, the human, so that it will be safer. To which I say, no, it won't. There's a, a video that I've mentioned in a previous video called, um, what was it? It's from a guy called Ben Jordan. I've forgotten the name, but basically it's telling the truth about autonomous vehicles. Uh, this Ben Jordan, he owns two cars with autonomous technology and he basically manages to prove that it's not ready for use yet. And one of them is a Tesla. Now, during the presentation, Musk talks about how it's going to be much safer for people to use autonomous vehicles than have a car with a human driver. Now, during the presentation, Musk made the claim that autonomous vehicles are going to be 20 to 30 times safer than cars driven by humans. But again, it's one of those numbers that are pulled out of thin air because they have no basis. He himself, in a investor call in April 2023, said that there were 17 fatalities using full self-driving. 
or should I say supervised full self-driving, which is of course an absolute contradiction. How can it be full self-driving if it's supervised and it's not full? Doesn't matter. 17 fatalities for 150 million miles of full self-driving across Tesla's whole fleet. Now, the National Highway Safety Traffic Administration, or what was it? I've forgotten. I've forgotten. It's NHTSA, as they call it in America. They said that there were 1.35 fatalities for every 100 million miles driven, compared to the actual number given by Musk, which, again, it was given by Musk, so we have to take it with a pinch of salt. It might be higher. Uh, the average is 11.3 per 100 million miles, which means it's nearly 10 times more dangerous than a car driven by a human. Hence, it is not safer at all. I just don't understand. In, in that presentation, he said, we're gonna have just AI and vision, which is the stupidest thing it still is because it ignores a couple of things that uh, happen during driving. One of them is something called fog, and the other is like heavy rain. And also, what's the other thing that happens? Oh yes, darkness. Yeah, nighttime that happens at the end of every day. Yeah, depending just on vision has its setbacks, honestly. And I've seen this firsthand because when I took my kids to school once, it was a school run, you know, as usual, and a lady in a Model Y was reversing to leave. She had a Model Y that had no parking sensors because by this time, Elmo thought, you don't need parking sensors, you know, something that costs like a couple of, of euros at best to install in a car. No, it's going to be, you know, camera based. Whammo! I just hear the, you know, a crunch as her car, she reversed into the person behind because the car didn't tell her. Because it's not, it's not a reliable system, full stop. It just isn't. Again, you know, if you've got fog, how is it going to tell what's through the fog? If you've got infrared, it can see straight through the frog. Frog? Fog. <laughs> straight through the frog. Sorry, don't know where that came from. Uh, same with LiDAR, same with radar, etc, etc, etc. There are lots of clever technologies that can uh, see more than we can see, infrared, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. And Elmo says, no, we don't need it. We just need vision and AI. It's a stupid thing to say that it's safer when it provably isn't. So again, I ask you what problem does this solve? Does this robo taxi thing solve? We're going to look at it from the point of view of an end user. Why would I choose a robo taxi over, for example, an Uber or some kind of equivalent service? Is it more convenient? It has the disadvantage, the robo taxi, you're going to have to load all the luggage yourself. You're not going to have a friendly Uber driver to help you put it in the boot. You also only have two seats, as is mentioned. So, for example, parents taking their kids to a doctor's appointment. Only one parent can go, which sucks. Families, uh, you know, friends that have you've got more than two friends, then again, this is not an option or you split up and, you know, each one take their own cab, which is a bit sucky. Is it cheaper? That's the big thing. I think the only advantage would be if it were cheaper. But as I mentioned earlier, there's no guarantee that that will be the case at all. Even the running costs may not be as cheap as Elmo says because of, you know, that induction charging, which is going to be 40% more energy at least, maybe, maybe more, who knows. And it's going to be a pain to clean. You're probably going to have to employ people. I don't know. I don't know. From the point of view of safety, would you get into a self-driving car made by a, an Elon Musk company? I know I bloody wouldn't, nor would I let anyone I like into one of them. Hell no. I'd like to also talk about the Robovan or whatever the stupid name it has, you know, uh, again, what's it trying to solve? Instead of having a proper bus, you're going to have a box with no ground clearance, no windows and uh, inferior capacity to a bus. What's the point? That's all I want to ask you. What's the bloody point? Now, the only problem that this whole thing is trying to solve, the Robo Taxi, the Robovan, and the whole event was the dip in Tesla share price. Elmo was trying to pump the stock up. That's what he does every time. He announces like this event, promises these undeliverable targets of products or services or whatever, but never come to fruition. And this time the market did not fall for it because the stock went down 6%. People are tired of Elmo's 
promises, lies and scams, and it just did not work this time, which is good. I even went on Tesla forums on Reddit, which I'm banned from commenting on, by the way. <laughs> yeah, because I have, you know, I've been on other subs. Um, Tesla fans are so thick skinned, not, that if you speak ill of Tesla on some other subreddit, they ban you on their own subreddits. So, but I've read them and even the Tesla faithful aren't buying a lot of the crap that Elon is selling this time which is telling. It might mean that the jig's up. Tesla has been overvalued for a very long time and I think it's going to start coming back down to earth now. I don't know. This is all in the air. Will the cyber cab taxi robo thing ever reach production? Who knows? It might, it might not. Will the Robovan ever see the streets? I seriously doubt it, honestly. I think it'll probably be used for like convention centers and car parks and places that have very flat services and very few people to cart around. So yeah, after all of this you probably get an inkling of where I stand regarding Elon Musk and Tesla. Although I have to be honest, you know, the people at Tesla, I think they do do a good job. They just got this moronic man-child at the top screaming at them and abusing them and telling them what to do when he's not impregnating female employees, of course. But what do you think? What's your opinion on this whole thing? Tell me what you think in the comments. If you're a Tesla fan, by the way, thanks for the engagement. Whether you hated this video or not, at least you were here and actually watched it. And I thank everyone who watched this video. And if you did like it, please leave a like, please subscribe, please share, all of those things. And I hope to see you in a future video. And while we're on the subject of vehicles that move using electricity, click on the top video on the right to find out why electric vehicles will become the norm and why that won't be so great. For more instances of bad ideas in the automotive world, click on the bottom video. Thanks again for watching.